Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ben Says Mercedes Garage. Today I wanted to give you an update on my W140 300SD rod bender project. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the rod bender, the Mercedes OM 603.97X engines built between 1991 and 1996 were bored to 3.5 liters, but they kept the original components from the OM 603.960 engines that were made for the W124s between 1987 and 1996. So that being said, since they were bored for 3.5 liters, the pistons were too big and they wobbled around, essentially bending the rods. So this is the OM 603.97X, or I guess now it's a combination of the 97X and the 0.9960 engine at the short block. But this is the engine in question with everything rebuilt. So first of all, I just want to tell you of what was kept from the 3.5 liter engine and what we used from the short block. Um, so from the three liter short block, we it was re-sleeved, so we obviously had the block. We kept the pistons and the camshaft, and that's basically it. Then from the 3.5 liter, we kept the intake manifold, um, the exhaust manifold, the injection pump, which is the 4701, and I'll get back to that later. The camshaft, the vacuum pump right here, uh, the valve lifter, springs, and guides. And then we bought new rings, so we re-ringed the pistons. Um, we got a new water pump, main bearings, rod bearings, a new timing kit, a new oil pump chain, and we rebuilt the head with new valves and valve stems. Okay, so I wanna tell you some things that I learned um, throughout this project. The most important thing is getting your timing right. So down here, it's kind of difficult to see with the, with the um, serpentine belt on, but on the crankshaft, um, there are marks. Okay, so for the valve timing and therefore the camshaft timing, you're gonna have a line on the camshaft itself coming off the gear, which is this one here. And when you take off the cover, you'll notice that you'll have another little nub right here on the number one bearing. And those two need to line up when your crank is at zero. So the markings go from 40 down to 10, and then an upside down 10, and that's zero. And then the other side, they go from 20 up till 10, and then the upside down zero. So your upside down 10 is zero. So for your uh, your valve timing, that's that's what you're looking for. When your mark is at zero on the, on the camshaft uh, bearing here, there's a mark up here if you take off this valve cover and the mark from the number one um, bearing and the number and the, the valve chain uh, bearing should line up. There's little lines. One. Number two is your timing for your injection pump also runs off of the same timing chain. So you're gonna have to set that up as well. The injection pump timing, however, um, you need to time it to 14 or 15 degrees after top dead center. And it's very important that you remember it's after top dead center um, because the mistake some people make is they'll time it either to 15 degrees before top dead center, which is here, or they'll time it to zero. And the engine will still run just barely, uh, but it won't sound good at all. So after top dead center, if we take into consideration that the crank rotates in this direction, right, that's normal engine rotation, then your after top dead center, which is here, would obviously be right around here, right? At 15, between the 10 and the 20. So when you're after top dead center here, um, the little nub on the side of your injection pump should be showing. So for those of you that aren't familiar, this is your injection pump right here. This is the 4701 model, which is original to the 3.5 liter. Um, from what I've read, the 1001 model that came with the three liter is also interchangeable because they basically produce the same horsepower. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. I would just take the best pump that you have. But the important thing to note is that on your camshaft or your, your crankshaft, um, there are also marks after the zero mark. And the really important thing is to have your injection pump timed at 14 degrees after top dead center. And once again, I'll show this to you on the computer later, not before. So that was one thing that the mechanic did wrong on this project and we had to take out the injection pump and redo it. Um, but that's one thing to keep in mind. So what I mean by having your injection pump timed is 
there's this 17 millimeter bolt here, which if you take this off with the wrench, obviously, um, you'll see a little tab, which when your pump is timed properly should pop out at 14 degrees. And to see this tab, you're actually gonna have to use a mirror because it's impossible to see from up here. Um, but you're gonna wanna get that timed to make your engine run properly. To adjust your timing, if it's only off by three or, three or four degrees, there are three 13 millimeter bolts right here around the uh, vacuum pump. So this, this module right here is your vacuum pump and you're gonna, you're gonna obviously take everything here out, but there's three 13 millimeter bolts that hold your injection pump in place. On certain models, there's also a bolt back here, which is bolted to the cruise control assembly. And that also holds your injection pump in place. On mine, I found that the bolt was missing, so I didn't have to worry about that. But essentially you can use these three 13 millimeter bolts along with a 27 millimeter socket on your crankshaft to time your pump three or four degrees. One more important thing um, are the vacuum lines. So on these model engines up until 1995, I believe, they used the vacuum lines to turn off the ignition when you turn the key. And if your vacuum lines aren't set up properly, your key actually won't turn off or the, the engine won't turn off when you turn the key and you're gonna have to run up here quickly, open the hood and press this emergency stop, which everyone should know about if you own a diesel. Um, but that's a big convenience and safety factor that you need to consider. So the vacuum lines that are on the W140s that I found are pretty standard and this is what they're supposed to look like. So you have the junction here, which is a three-way junction going into one line. This comes from the vacuum pump. Um, I believe the yellow one runs to your climate control unit to open and close the valves inside. And the orange one has something to do with the door locks, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then these lines all run together. So you'll see the clear line here. You can see the clear line running through the tube. And then the clear line should hook up to this module here at the furthest forward position. So the white line connects here into this module and this module is the pneumatic module that activates your engine shutoff. Um, there's a line behind it with this green one-way check valve and a clear white, white line that runs all the way down into your transmission. If this accidentally gets unplugged, you would just have to crawl under your transmission on the driver's side and look up and you'll see where it connects to. There's a red solenoid that it connects to. Um, then there's this Y junction here. Not exactly sure what this does, but just make sure that the black line runs into it here and out the back, it should run into this EGR unit. So that black line should run here into this EGR unit. And this is the actual unit that will um, give you three seconds of vacuum when you shut off the engine. So this line here runs to this solenoid and this is the actual solenoid that'll push your lever down to shut off the engine. So make sure that this is all set up here. Then your brown line, which runs from here, if you follow it through the tube, it'll come out here and it connects under here to the high pressure valve through a little T-junction right here. One more important thing um, that I noticed with the, the key shut off is that the wiring harness plugs need to be in the right position. And this caused us a lot of <laughs> A lot of hardship, I guess, figuring this out. So this plug here, it has a blue and a brown wire. I'm not exactly sure if the colors match up, but just remember that the one with two wires should plug into this plug here. And this is where it receives a signal from your key to turn the vacuum on for three seconds. We mix this up with this one here, this plug, which as you can see has three wires, a white and two brown. And this is the one that runs your RPM gauge. This wire here, this thicker wire, you'll notice runs down to the transmission and right where it connects to the uh, flywheel is where it, gets this, where it gets the speed sensor from. So that's what this is. This will run your RPM gauge as well as your fuel consumption gauge. So if you notice that those two gauges aren't running when you're driving, maybe try swapping, uh, swapping these two out. I'm just going to tell you a few more things that I've learned throughout this project. Um, some interesting uh, plugs and wires that you might want to know about for your sensors. Um, there's a sensor here behind the injector lines, but basically it's on your uh, head gasket and it's just a two prong regular Mercedes style sensor. 
So right down here, it's just a regular two-prong Mercedes style uh, sensor. This is what runs your, um, your coolant gauge in your instrument cluster. If you follow that sensor wire, as you can see, this one was re-sleeved, it should plug into this plug right here. Uh, that's one other hardship we had was that our coolant gauge in the car wasn't working properly. So this is the plug that it should look, that it should plug into. While we're here, I'll also show you the injectors. As you can tell, this was also re-sleeved. Um, so this box uh, is what controls your sorry not your injectors your glow plugs so this box is what controls your pre-glow when you get that light in your dashboard as you can tell there are six wires that run along here around the engine and then they connect to the um, glow plugs individually and one more thing i'll tell you while we're here is this plug here just if you're having trouble with your cruise control this is the cruise control plug that runs to your module which is behind the injection pump the last thing i'll show you is the plug that runs your um, oil pressure gauge in your dashboard. Um, if you can see behind, basically underneath the fuel filter, there's this plug here. Uh, and this is the sensor that runs your oil, con oil pressure gauge in your dashboard. If it's not running properly, um, maybe, the plug, maybe the plug is on backwards because these ones you can actually put on backwards. Okay everyone, I hope that helped you with your project or maybe it gave you some insight into the vacuum lines of your W140 engine. Uh, the last thing I'll leave with you is I'll just start the engine, I'll let you hear it run and I'll show you all the gauges in the dashboard that they're working. gauge works, the, the coolant temperature gauge works, the oil pressure gauge works, which should speed up when you rub the engine a little bit, RPM gauge works, um, and then obviously the speedometer works. The fuel consumption gauge and the RPM gauge um, run off the same sensor, so if one of them, or if both of them aren't running, then it's a really simple fix. Alright everyone, I hope that helped you. Uh, if you have any other questions regarding your own project or any other W140 questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Take care.